And also we have engineer at Pepsoe at Daniel SMSC, the former chairman MSDE pardon. Could you put your hands together for him? We also like to recognize the presence of all branch chairmen, all branch chairmen, please, all branch chairmen of NSC. Thank you very much for coming. Please a round of applause for yourself, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. And uh, we would like to also recognize the presence of all council members of NSC. All council members. Thank you very much for coming. And um, all fellow of Nigeria Society of Engineers, your presence. All fellow of Nigeria Society of Engineers, your presence. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I would like to um, also make welcome to the high table, Engineer Dr. Ademola. Engineer Dr. Ademola Adesole, SNSC, the former chairman, the former chairman, Mr. Chairman, MSD, your president today, could you put your hands together for him? Could you put your hands together for him? Engineer Dr. Ademola Adesole, MSD. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for coming. And also we have uh, the Vice President of MSD. All right, um, this is personal apology from the Vice President of MSD. He has sent apologies for today's event due to an urgent official engagement in his office at Abuja. Development Engineer Joseph Kobe Akintoro. Please, could you put your hands together for him in absentia? Thank you very much. Also, we have a special guest of honor here present, and um, we are happy to have him among us. He is uh, the Director of um, Renewable Energy, Federal Ministry of Power, Mr. Benjamin Engineer Farouk Yusuf. Engineer Farouk Yusuf, please put your hands together for Engineer Farouk Yusuf. You're welcome. Please come to the high table. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. And also we have in our midst, the Chairman of NSC Ibadan. The Premier Branch, the Chairman of NSC Ibadan, the person of Engineer Adeta Mola Falade Fatila. Please celebrate him, ladies and gentlemen. Fatila, yeah, please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much for coming. Yes, I um, will try to be as quick as possible because um, we, the high point of today's event actually is the lecture, and I'm very sure we are all prepared you know, to learn one or two things from my guest lecturer for today. But before we proceed, I want us to quickly honor our dear country, Nigeria, as we rise on our feet to take the national anthem. Please, can we all be upstanding as we take the national anthem of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Thank you. seats. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm still recognizing our distinguished guests here present. 
I would like to recognize the presence of the past chairman of Nigeria Society of Engineers, E. Padon, in person of Engineer Sam Adeleke. You're welcome, sir. Please, a round of applause for him, please. Engineer Sam Adeleke. Thank you very much. Okay, quickly, uh, it is time to kickstart the event proper, and um, we will not start this program without putting it in the hands of the Most High God. So at this moment, at this point, I would like to make welcome a man of God here present today to come forward to take the opening prayer. Please put your hands together as we make welcome to the microphone, Venerable Engineer BBO Obaweya. Please celebrate him, ladies and gentlemen, as we take the opening prayer. Please bow your heads in prayer. Eternal, immortal, the only wise God. You are the giver and the sustainer of life. Thank you for granting us the grace to see another day in the land of the living. We invite your presence to tabernacle with us today. And we ask that you will guide our thoughts, our words, and our actions. That everything will be to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that the things we hear today, the things we say today, and the things we do hereafter will add value to society and to our individual lives in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayers, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together. Thank you very much. Can you please um, help me accompany the Venerable Engineer B.B. Obaweya to the high table. He's also a distinguished guest here present today. Please put your hands together for him as he uh, moves to uh, the high table. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, we all know why we are all gathered here today. But um, at this point, I would like to bring up here the chief host for today as he will come forward to tell us the major reason why we are gathered here today and um, how he has been able to put this together you know, in grand style. Can you please put your hands together as we make welcome a very humble man, a very humble boss, I must tell you, the chairman, Nigerian Society of Engineers, Oluyo Le Branch, in person of Engineer Ademola Agoro, FNSE. Please, a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. You can do better than that. Put your hands together. He's the chief host for today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, the chairman of the occasion, our dear president, Engineer Dekulemokolo, His Excellency, in the chief host, Engineer Shimaki, the Executive Governor of Oyo State, our distinguished guest lecturer, Dr. Joseph Schaeffer, the President of Galilee International Management Institute, our special guest, the Acting Director, Department of Renewable Ministry of Power, Engineer Farouk Yusuf Yabo, distinguished past President of Nigeria Society of Engineer President, Distinguished council members of the Nigerian Society of Engineer President, the president of APBN, distinguished press chairman of Nigerian Society of Engineer President, distinguished divisional chairman of Nigerian Society of Engineer President here today, distinguished past branch chairman of Nigerian Society of Engineer, our distinguished guest. Invited guest by our, our guest speaker of today, ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely uh, 
want to apologize for starting this program lately. It was due to some reorganization that we had initially. Please as kindly accept my apology. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to the second edition of NSC Oli Branch Annual Lecture in honor of our father, engineer Ifeda Yor Akintune. We give glory to God for the journey mercy for those who have traveled far and near to be part of this historic event. We appreciate your presence, support, and encouragement to the success of this event. As you recall, the theme of the Maiden Edition Lecture was building multipurpose water infrastructure for small, medium, and large down the United States, the role of academics, industrialists, and government. The last year lecture was delivered by engineer John Singh, Bamdila Deumi, chairman of the Crown West Abia Company Limited, and the current president of the Nigerian Society of uh, the president of Niger uh, current president of Nigerian Committees on Large Dams. The lecture was attended by the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Kulumakulu, FNSC, and several fellows of our great society and past president of the NSC, the government of your state was well represented in the course of the conference. In the paper delivered, engineer Dr. Adewin was able to let us submit that uh, each potential that exists in your state for multipurpose water infrastructure in the state. The lecturers submitted that surface water potential of geological areas six where or your state is located is more than 35 billion cubic meter per year, requiring the construction of two large dams and to 23 small and medium dams for its effective state development to enhance the social industrial development of your state. The lecturer further presented technical information on Ikere Gorge Dam and medium aggregation project in which the federal government had asset worth more than $2 billion. In terms of dam infrastructure, large quantity of ductile iron pipe, aluminum pipe, vertical turbine pumps, and large generators and transformers. The lecturer called on the government of your state, the Nigerian State of Engineer, and the private sector to take advantage of the current policy on PPP to in invest in the completion of 30 megawatt plant in the Karigot Dam and put Midu Ogun in region located near Isain Town into effective use. The lecturer also drew the attention of the participants to possibility of huge potential of Ashijire Dam for the incorporation of floating solar PV panel on the reservoir at a mass minimum investment. For this year, the topic of this decision is economic development based on Israeli experience, lesson to Nigeria. Our distinguished lecturer, Dr. Joseph Sivert, in his summary, the lecture is going to focus on the development of high-tech agriculture in Nigeria based on hard and Israeli experience. Our intention to organize this uh, uh, program is uh, engineering lecture is to see how professionals in Nigeria, the engineers, the people in the public sector, the government can collaborate and learn from the Israeli experience and be able to use that to develop the agricultural sector of the nation. I will want to assure you that this lecture, even not minding the number of people that are here, the outcome of this lecture is going to be publicized over the whole nation. And everybody that needs to hear about this uh, lecture will make sure that they hear about it. We are still expecting His Excellency or His representative, but we need to uh, proceed on this uh, program while we wait uh, for their arrival. In conclusion, I would like to wish everyone present here a wonderful time and a better understanding of the topic. 
I want to use the opportunity again to thank everyone for, uh, for coming here today. We appreciate your presence. Please just try and listen and make a better use of everything that the lecturer has to say. Thank you. Sorry, please. Please, I would like to change the other program a bit by inviting the number one engineer in Nigeria, the president of the Nigeria Society of Engineers, Engineer Adekule Mokulu. Please put your hands together for the number one engineer in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, my chairman. What a great day. A great and historical day. The laureate and honoree of today Our past president, the great past president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, our father, our mentor, our friend, our brother, our grandfather, our teacher, our inspiration our benefactor, our album of inspiration, engineer Ifedayo Akitunde, distinguished fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Sir, it's so great a honor for me and also a privilege to recognize you today. For sincerely, we are yet to see anyone that will fill your shoes as president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. But one thing we are assuring you of, and I'm sure you are seeing it, as the touch that you lit that time is being passed from hand to hand, we all are making it to be brighter, and they will continue to be brighter by the grace of God in Jesus' name. The past presidents of the Nigerian Center of Engineers that are present here, all my orgas on whose shoulders I'm standing, like to first recognize my dear brother, engineer Alade, Olumiwa Alade Ajibola, FNSC the Agba King of the Source. Oh, I didn't mention Engineer Chief Olumiwa Aladie Adjivala, FNSC, the Agba King of the Source. I salute you, sir, and I welcome you. The past president, Engineer Isaac, Ademola Isaac Olorunfemi, FNSC. I salute you, sir. I think... Um, I don't have any other guy in the house again. Okay. Um, all the family members of the honorary of today, the Fair today family, I recognize you. All the vice presidents that are here, the chairman 
hardworking chairman and the difficulty role chairman of Oluyole branch of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Engineer Ademola Agoro. All the chairman of branches that are present here, and past chairman of branches of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Also, let me go to our membership now. The fellows that are present here and members, including their spouses, all the distinguished guests, I am guessing that the students are just coming in. Students, I recognize you. All the students in engineering are from our various universities. The last and not the least that I want to recognize is the person that is going to increase our intellectual resources by hundredfold today. Dr. Joseph Shevard, I am from Galilee Institute. I recognize you, sir. Thank you so much for coming. A lot is still going to be said about you, but because of our time, let me just reserve it. But indeed, on behalf of the entire membership of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, and particularly also the citizens of this country, I thank you so much for coming. Sometimes when you hear the voice through the presence of the juggernaut himself, the guru himself, eyes are open, ears are open, and inspiration comes. So it's in that regard that I thank you for taking time to come all the way from Israel to be able to be with us today. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will now go into my speech. I thank the Almighty God for yet another opportunity for us all to gather here today. The occasion, as we already know, is the Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSC, Oluyole branch. And this branch, I must say that is indeed a trailblazer. A trailblazer in the sense that it has taken this branch only two years to do the things that older branches were doing. And um, I want this to be a challenge to all NSC branches all over the country. So then I'm elected to really be part and parcel of this historic occasion which we are gathered here to celebrate. The NSC Oluyole branch public lecture in honor of our icon, engineer Ifeda Yakutude, FNSC FAN. For the benefit of our friends, engineer Akitude is a revered past president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers between 1987 and 1988. Engineer Kitude has earned our respect in all ramifications, and we duly acknowledge the personal sacrifice he has made over the years, including the dis dissipation of his energy by travels to distant lands, all to represent the Nigerian Society of Engineers at different international fora. This thoroughbred engineer erudite scholar and a complete gentleman in whose honor we are gathered here today was at the World Engineering Assembly, Rome, 2017. There he was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award. He is the first African to back this honor. Let me also appreciate those who in one way or the other have continually supported him to make this high, this high point, which will have resulted to this magnitude of honor, not only to our society, 
but the entire nation and the continent. The cardinal objective of our public lecture, amongst other reasons, is to strengthen the capacity of our members. We must ensure that our members are adequately equipped and have the mastery over tasks, particularly those within our jurisdiction and our profession. On Monday, 1st of July, 2019, I was invited by the Nigerian Institution of Civil Engineers, NICE, to formally open their corporate headquarters office in Abuja. During my message at the event, I used the opportunity to charge our divisions, institutions, and branches to unveil practical solutions to the factors militating against our development as a nation with focus on crucial areas of the economy. Last year, the Oluyole branch held a lecture, Building Multipurpose Water Infrastructure for Small, Medium, and Large Dams in Oyo State, Roles of Academics, Industrialists, and Government. Again, this year, a theme has been carefully earmarked, an economic development based on Israeli experience, lessons to Nigeria, is in fact so important and very apt at this time. The reason is just this. The Israeli experience should be a template that Nigerians should be able to adopt easily. And why is that so? It's all based on knowledge-based economy knowledge-based economy to ensure that there is proper arrangement to help those who are in need to be able to have the basic things of life to enjoy. The other, of course, is to ensure that those who are the custodians of all these resources apply them in such a way that the whole of the country will be able to enjoy the commonwealth. And for the Israelis, there's a template that they do also have. All their leaders, their leaders, they eat last. With this, I'm very certain that our erudite lecturer, Dr. Joseph Chavelle, who is an internationally recognized resource person will be able to do justice to this and will be able to ensure that all the listeners in this hall will immediately convert themselves to ambassadors of better life for Nigeria. I'm alerted that these contemporary issues brought to the front burner for us to provide solutions will excite us and provide for us interaction amongst people of diverse backgrounds and presentations. I appreciate the innovations that the Oluyole branch have introduced into our public lecture series. While urging you to keep the flag flying, I call on other branches, other branches to equally emulate NSC Oluyole branch style for us to use our lectures as true avenues for interacting with our stakeholders. I wish to seize this opportunity to restate our commitment to the advocacy for the engineering profession in Nigeria, which has been at the center of activities since 1959. The society involves in collaborating, influencing, and providing quality service to the various arms of government, industry, commerce, the academia, and the society at large. The society also promotes policies that will lead to the economic prosperity of Nigerians. The lecture that we are going to listen to today is no exception towards ensuring that this is another very, very table platform to further expose some of 
such issues. Once again, I thank you and welcome you to this great occasion. And we are coming to make this one. For my recollection, this is the first time we are having a figure like Dr. Joseph Chever coming into this country to speak at occasions like this in the history of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. So we are expecting great things to happen after this occasion. And of course, when the seeds that will be sown today will eventually germinate, we will nurture them and ensure that they bear fruits and those fruits will be available first to the president, my humble self, and then to the lecturer, and then to engineer Ifeaki today himself, and then to the branch chairman, and then to our past presidents, and then to our fellows, and then to our members, and then to our students, and to the society at large. May this be accomplished by the power of God in Jesus' name. I thank you so much for our attention, and God bless you all. I believe we can do better than that. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, just like he said, great things are going to happen after this lecture, and I'm very sure I will be a part of those great things. I don't know. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I don't know I about you. <laughs> okay, um, I can see our brothers, sisters, engineering students in the house. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we are very uh, close to the lecture now. You know, I told you the high point of this event is the lecture, you know, for today. And I'm very sure we are all prepared. The lecturer is set, and I'm very sure we as well, you know, we will have a whole lot to take home today. But before we move on, I would like to quickly um, recognize the presence of some of our dignitaries here present today. And also, first and foremost, I would like to read the apology uh, from the Vice President. You know, he sent his apology due to the fire outbreak at Benin. You know, uh, he actually wants to be here, but uh, because of that, he had to, you know. That's the Vice President, NSC, the National Vice President. Yeah, the person of Engineer Tassil, Woodill, FNSC. So uh, please put your hands together for him in absentia. Please celebrate yes. him. Celebrate him. Okay, we have in uh, our midst the Director of Physical Planning, University, University of, of Ibadan, in person of Engineer Ajibola Kende. Please celebrate him, put your hands together. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. And um, also we have the Acting Chief Technical Officer, Ibadan Electricity Distribution IBEDC. Company. IBDC. IBDC, yes. In person of Engineer Felix, Felix Abiodun. Abiodun. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we have an Amis as well, the chairman, NIEEE. -E. Institution of Electrical Electronics and um, Electrical Electronics Engineer. Yes, that's my field, sir. You know, you sure? you know I'm an electrical engineer. You that's know, great. I'm very happy to have him amongst us. <laughs> Please celebrate engineer Silvanos Ajuya. Celebrate him, celebrate him. You're welcome, sir. Yes. We are the most accurate engineers in, in the world, you know, you electrical. See. When you make a mistake, you are in trouble. <laughs> I'm doubting whether you are an engineer. <laughs> because I'm putting on tie, right? <laughs> we have Professor Engineer Kazim Adekunle Adepeye. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, he is the rector of the Polytechnic the Poly Ibadan. And um, we celebrate him. He's ably represented by his deputy, the person of the Mr. The Bayo Oyelade. The, the deputy the, rector, The please. deputy rector. Oh, he's around. Oh, please oh. celebrate him. You're welcome, sir. Apologies, sir. Apologies, apologies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Wow, it's indeed a great honor to have him around in person. Thank you very much. And also, we have a real father in the house, Oba Adedayo Oguti Meni of Igburo Land. Am I, am I correct? Igburo Igburo Land. Yeah, please celebrate him. Kabiesio. Kadekpelo Riki Batakpelese. Ki Irukere Kpelo Woki Ashekpelenu. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, moving on right about now, it is time to um, 
have a special introduction and citation of engineer Ifedayo Akintunde. Our Baba FNSC. FANG. Academy of Engineers. Mm. And, and this will this be done citation. by engineer Akintayo Akintola FNSC. Please let's put our hands together. Thank you very much. Uh, should we keep Baba standing? Baba is as young as strong. Please, let's jam our hands together once again. Baba, let's usher Baba up. No, don't, don't bring him up. Let him sit. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Citation. It's an honor to give the citation of Engineer Feder Yuakin to the FNSC, F-A-E-N-G. I met Baba first time when he was the chairman of the University of Ibadan, uh, old student, uh, alumni, who was the chairman then. And they introduced him as the vice president of the World Federation of Engineers. I said, I want to be like him. I thought it's a thing that you buy for and you automatically become. I never knew what he went through, but I want to go through some of them so that all of us will know that Baba did not just go there, but he labored for it. God bless you, sir. Engineer, if you are key to the FNSCFANG, past president in the Nigerian Society of Engineers, and a former vice president of the World Federation of Engineering Organizations, is a distinguished fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, and a former president of the same society. If you mention if you are key today, you are talking about a household name. Not only in Ibadan, not only in the Southwest, but all over Nigeria and in the world in general. He's quoted in four different world who is who. He began his career as a young engineer, and he became a fellow of the Institution of Civil Engineers of the UK and a chartered engineer of UK since 1965 when some of us were not even taught to be born. It was registered by Korean in 1974. He began his career in the UK with some engineering consulting firm before taking up appointment with the Western State Ministry of Works and Transport. He had a master's degree in environmental engineering. And this one gave him an opportunity to work with the World Bank on various projects. He set up a firm called Proven Consult Consultants in 1967. Till date, is the chief executive. He worked with government and he has been involved in many projects through his firm, Proven, since 1967. Those who think that are the 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 if you are talking about bridges, Baba is a guru. Water supply, of which we are also talking about today, and many other things, Baba is a guru. Let's give a round of applause to Baba. He's not only just in engineering, but he's also an author of many books. I know I have those copies at home. Technological Development Through Self-Help is a 286 pages book and is also the author of the Nigerian construction industry, the past, the present, problem, and prospects. If any one of us have gone through any of this book, you will know Baba is a prophet. 
the situation still remain the same. I pray one day things will change for the better. A former president of the World Federation of Engineering Organization for 12 good years. Let's give a round of applause to him. From 1991 to 2003. And since then, no Nigerian has ever been able to get into that shoe. In Abuja, during my message at the event, these are not an umbrella international organization that brought together all engineering organizations all over the world. Baba is not a nation with focus on crucial areas of the economy. This pastor left last year to show that the community is recognized. And I pray. As he continues to grow, the Lord will continue to be with Baba in his spiritual life too, in Jesus' name. In 1985 to 86, Baba became the vice president of NSC. And in 1987, he became the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. It was when Baba came in that massive development and increase in membership of the NSC was given a full meaning. Young engineers need NSC for their professional development, while the NSC needs the senior engineers. With focus on crucial areas, which I believe some of us are leveraging. Last year, and we visited all the the branch. 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 Then, the branch. was so effective and he had to pay cost call to many engineers. And Baba, in his nature, exposed the Nigerian engineers to the whole world. And this is on the platform of the World Engineering, World Federation of Engineering Organization, and the Federation of African Organization of Engineers. We have Baba served as an exec executive member from 1987 to 2003. Baba, contributed so much that there was a formula that came after called Akin Today Formula. So if you have not never seen that before, go go it and you know what Akin Today Formula is. Baba have served and I believe today's occasion is not just a thing that you are just doing but because of his service to the progression. He has contributed so much to, in every aspect of engineering. He served variously in other dimensions. He was once an editorial committee, a chairman for the editorial committee for the, the BFEO publication, and assisted the president on many things, including the code of ethics of engineering. And for his last year as vice president, in 2001, 2003, he was also the chair of the famous WFEO Merit Award Committee, a body that sought out the best engineer in the world for the honor of WFEO Prize of Merit Award. On the home front, he has also served on the board of universities, corporations, and private organizations, faculty of, education, uh, faculty of technology, Ibadan Polytechnic, of which the director is here today, uh, faculty boards of technology of the old University of Ife, which is now called Abafemi Awolo University, and some other boards where he served as chairman. On December 2nd, 2017, he was awarded the World Federation of Engineering Organization Gold Medal for Engineering Excellence. Is the first Africa African to be so honored. A round of applause for Baba. The International Conference Center of the University of Badon. Baba was the project manager. If we keep counting, 
I know this book will not be able to contain all we're supposed to say about Baba. In the sun, we are here present. I want us to stand up and say thank you, God, for sparing the life of Baba for today. With a round of applause. Thank you very much. You are so honored, sir. God bless you, sir. Okay, sir. We will thereby listen to Baba uh, just to say something to us. Event. I use the opportunity 
So she sees my year six um, black gold and yellow gold simultaneously. What have we not got in Nigeria? Even the equation that formulated her weather could have been accused of exhibiting divine favoritism. Yet, at 20 years post-independence, Nigeria was clearly and not developing. At least not developing to expectation. The imaginative Nigerians their predictions and so on as to where Nigeria would be in global reckoning was shattered. This gap between expectation and actual notice as early as the first decade started to become wider and wider. People say that there is no reason for Nigeria's poor rate of effective national development as she is so well endowed naturally. However, hardly is it ever mentioned, ever emphasized, the fact that Nigeria first jettisoned her first love before her woes started to descend on her. She left undone what she used to do that was good. In the process, she lost all senses of shame in the beginning, Nigeria was noted for high morality, high degree of responsibility, honesty, and integrity. This now all seemed to have gone with the winds. Nigeria must, be, must have to reinvent these good qualities so that they can, be, they can become good foundation for effective national development. You remember the story of, of, a, of a judge in London those days, a long time ago, before I got to London in 1956. The judge openly pronounced in court that Nigeria cannot be dishonest, that he would bring the Nigerian before him for some other offenses. He would convict the Nigerian, but not for dishonesty. That was the reputation we had those days. But where is the reputation now? It's gone with the winds. The, 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 the prescription which the Nigerian Southern Indians has given to Nigeria at the beginning of our independence should be followed. NSC's recommendation to Nigeria was as follows. And it's made up of four parts. One is that rigid, we should rigidly adopt science, engineering, and technology as the language of effective national development and back it up with, national, with correspondingly adequate budgetary provisions. If you must use a thing, make that thing. If you cannot make that thing for the time being, then you don't use it, you don't use it for the time being. And number three is that you develop a stubborn political posture, political will, and use it to govern yourself. Don't yield to any opposition, including those colors of overseas. The fourth one is maintain this rigid discipline over self-reliance for at least five years. In 1988, I'll give, give you an example of what happens in other places. In 1988, a ton of California rice was selling at 180 US dollars landed in Japan. At that same time, Japanese farmers asked their government for two thousand dollars, US dollars, for the same one ton of rice, 
the news of Japanese armies. Look at that, 180 to 2000, you may see one is Memon. What is the great profit the, 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 the Japanese will make by smuggling? So the government forbid it. They said, don't buy direct from abroad. Buy from a local farmer. At 11 times the cost, the government did not mind. The people did not complain. And in fact, smuggling was none. Of, there was no smuggling. What was, what was happening in Nigeria if that situation should persist? And to make, it, to make it worse, the Americans proved clever. They organized a big exhibition in the streets of Japan. And they parceled California rice in small dishes and labeled it beautifully. And distributed them freely to Japanese, hoping that by tasting it, that would induce them to buy U.S. rice. And what did the Japanese do? They collected all the samples and burned them in the open big fire in the streets of Japan. That is what I call self-reliant par excellence Japanese style. At the same time, in 1988, Nigerian papers were busy reporting military and police vehicles building themselves, escorting smuggled convoys of anything to their secret hiding places. The government vehicles escorting Tandapan to secret places of hiding. I call that Nigerian unreliable self-reliant by excellence. We have assumed that you know what is the effective digital development. It may not be an international word or an international phrase, but here we mean the development that is in the, that is endogenic, that is endogenic to your people, nation on development effective. It must be endogenic. That is, when the nations know it, they take part in it, they can build it, they can maintain it, they can replicate it, they can play with it. Then it's the to pay that development becomes indigenous to them. And that is effective development. Otherwise, it is equipment dumping. I want to stop on that, so as to go on the second point that I want to touch on. That is this lecture. I have effectively informed the Zululuri branch of the Nigerian State of Engineer that these annual lectures that reflect the fine, or must reflect the finest of academic such culture, the purest of Nigerian essence, and the loftiest refinement in the art of national development, all mixed and presented in the art of national development. In the, all presented at the cutting edge of human knowledge. It will therefore have to be to bring to this forum every year leaders in their own right leaders in their own fields of experience to address this gathering. The executive committee of this branch, under the leadership of foundation chairman, the Ademola Asso, he has promised me that they will do this. So they have an obligation to ensure that the standard of this lecture every year is high and, and it comes at the cutting edge of existing scientific knowledge. The, the, the third thing I want to mention is about the guest lecturer himself. The guest lecturer is a lucky find for Nigeria, and I think at this time he is God sent. What we have been doing for 60 years and not making a total of it 
is going to make the source of creation of creation almost instantaneously. If you look at the country being formed in 1948 and going to war a few years after, and defeating five or six countries simultaneously, to go they all pumped down in six days. Can, 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 can you do that? A country that young, leading the world in science, in manufacture, in research, in everything. You say it, you can't beat it. In agriculture, they lead the world. So you have a man like this who is behind the development of India, uh, of, of, of Israel, to come and tell us how they do it there. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your city belt, because you are going to be taken on a very violent flight across turbulent weather. In order not to be, feel uncomfortable, I advise you to fasten your city belt as you invite the next coming. But I want to tell you also that you may have to loosen your city belt after the lecture and go back to your home to ponder what you have had. Because there will be no refreshment, there will be no uh, what do you do after Baba Sa party? Uh, refreshment, okay? There will be no refreshment in an academic lecture, there will be no refreshment at this venue, there will be no at my house either. It is for you to go home and digest what you hear from here. Thank you very much. I think Baba deserves a standing ovation, please. What a strength. What a brain. Keep clapping, keep clapping, celebrate this great icon. He's a living legend. Yes. Celebrating, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I believe we were able to learn yes. a whole lot from what Baba had to say. And you know what? We have the children of Baba, the grandchildren around. Wow. Came to celebrate. Shall we jam our hands once again together for the entire family? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Can we please sit? We can have a seat now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, this event is uh, being streamed live on the internet. So um, on www.ifedayoatuntundelecture.ml. Yes. You can actually forward that to loved ones, friends, and families so they can actually watch. watch us from home. As we do it here. Yeah www.ifedayo.akintundelecture.ml Thank you very much. Yes, while the events were ongoing, we have some other uh, dignitaries joined us. And um, let me start with the person I can call a phenomenon. He's a fellow of the Nigerian um, Society of Engineers, a fellow of the Academy of um, Engineers. He's the Chief Operating Officer of the Ibadan Electricity Distribution Company. I mean, no other person, but we want to have respect for engineer John Ayodili. Let's put our hands together. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. And also, we have in our midst today the Honorable representing Oluyo State Constituency or your State House of Assembly. And he's representing yes. the Honorable Speaker of the House of Assembly or your State. Yes, person of Honorable Wale Adetunji. Please celebrate him, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And also we have um, the past chairman, NSE Ibadan Branch, in person of engineer Olayinka Ali, FNSC. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. We have to bring this person to the high table now. Okay, um, the chairman, NSE Ogbomosho. Can you please celebrate him as he comes forward? Engineer Professor Onowumi. Please celebrate, celebrate Engineer Professor Onowumi as he um, comes forward. Please come forward, you're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. And also we have uh, Engineer. Chairman, NSE Ikeja Branch. Yes, Ikeja Branch. He has come all the way from Ikeja, Lagos State. And a leading engineer. A leading engineer, yeah. Engineer Mrs. 
Fumi Akimbafu, FNSC. Celebrate her, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And also, we have a national ESCO member, NSC, here present today, the person of Engineer Mojisola Olong Toba. Please celebrate. You're welcome, huh? ma'am. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. We introduced the rector of the Polytechnic Ibadu the other time, but um, we failed to introduce his entourage. So please, um, shall we ask all the entourage of the rector, the Polytechnic Ibadu, to, to please rise up as we celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Please put your hands together for all uh, entourage of the rector. We the have the rector himself seated here, mm. Engineer Professor Adibi Kazim. You're all welcome, sirs. All right. We have the... Okay. okay. Uh, I'm very sure we are good to go on that. Yes, like we said earlier, the high point of this event is actually the lecture, and um, it is time to have that. Uh, but uh, before we do that, we will have reading the citation yes. of our guest lecturer, and that um, will be done by engineer Sheye Akintola. Then he will be she handing over to Sheye Okay, sorry. And he will be handing over the microphone to the um, lecturer for today. I believe we are all prepared with um, our writing materials, you know, so that we can actually pick up one or two things yes. before we leave this venue today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please, join me as I welcome upstage the the lecturer, the guest lecturer of today, as he stands up here, we take the citation. A round of applause for him, please. All the way from Israel. He has bachelor, master, PhD in administration from Hebrew University, Israel, and New York University. He has other degrees in geography, history, economics, and management. He's the founding president of Galilee International Management Institute, a former lecturer at the University of Ephra in the Department of Economics, and. Uh, the director of the Department of Management Studies, University of Ifa, ED. He is a former lecturer at the Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, and the Bar Hillan University, Israel. He is a member of the Prime Minister's Committee on Social Policy. He is a member of the Environmental Committee on the Hefa region, under the auspices of Israel Ministry of Energy a director and coordinator of several joint European Mediterranean networks in the field of management and economic development, an associate at Harvard University and the University of California, Berkeley, a Senate member of the Euro-Mediterranean University established in Slovenia under the auspices of the European Union. He is a frequent guest lecturer and keynote speaker at the vibrant Gujarat by annual conference in India, a speaker at Moscow State University, and much invited guest lecturer on economic and social development through higher education, climate change, and the Israeli startup experience at many leading universities in Africa, including Kenya, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Nigeria, Ghana, Burkina Faso, and the likes. He is a board member of the Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria, actively works towards peacemaking in the Middle East and the Horn of Africa. He is, that is Dr. Shevi, a member of the East African Security Forum since 2012 and an active member of the Asian University President Forum since 2005. He has presented lectures at the forum's meeting in Bangkok in the year 2006, in Korea in the year 2005. He is a senior member of the Mediterranean Peace Forum in Italy. He has led delegations and discussions between Palestinians 
and Israelis in an effort to reach a peace agreement. Likewise, he has lectured at the United Nations University on Leadership Academic in Haman University, Leadership, Management, and Economic Prospects in the Middle East following peace agreement, and he is actively involved in the World Public Forum, the Dialogue of Civilization. Please, I want to crave your indulgence as we rise to once again welcome the guest lecturer again for today, Dr. Joseph Shevel, all the way from Israel. You're welcome, sir. Give it all to him. Thank you. Thank you, and shalom. Can you turn this uh, light off also? All these lights. Uh, thank you. So, first of all, thank you very much for all those words, and uh, thank you for inviting me, and it's really a pleasure being here. I must say, that, uh, you know, you mentioned that I'm invited to all kinds of other places. Last week I was in Mexico and I gave a lecture. But I must say that the warmth of hospitality here in Nigeria is something special. And, and I'm not saying it because I'm in Nigeria. It's not my first time in Nigeria. In fact, I was here in Ibadan at the university. Um, at least two or three years ago, also at the postgraduate uh, school. Yesterday we met with the vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan, who is alumni of our institute, and also the former vice chancellor, Professor Adewole, who is also, who is now the Minister of Health, he is also alumni of our institute. So we have so many, and there are some alumni here that came today, a uh, special welcome to them. So we, uh, uh, I think I mentioned it yesterday to the president that I already feel half Nigerian. Uh, in, uh, maybe you should consider, you know, honorary citizenship or something like that. <laughs> so first I want to start by uh, 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 mentioning, I hope you can see here and the, the, oh, here also, that uh, Israel is a very small country. In fact, Prior to coming here, I looked at the, um, at, uh, the internet for uh, Oyo State. Can you imagine? Oyo State is bigger than Israel. Oyo State is 28,000 square kilometers, and Israel is only 20,000. Only. And, uh, and I always said, and I said it yesterday around dinner, that Israel here is the only country in the Middle East with no oil. Here you can see. All the other countries that have oil, and can you imagine, the Israelis were always compl complaining to him, how come, what kind of promised land is this with no oil and also no water? And I will talk about water. And, but now we understand why. Look at this. Education is the most powerful weapon with, you can change the word. Who said it, you know? Nelson Mandela. And indeed, I think that the Israeli experience, the Israeli model is that we invested in education, we invested in capacity building, we invested in training, and I will tell you what we reach today and why people come from all around the world now to learn from the Israeli experience. And I mentioned yesterday that our first prime minister, Ben Gurion, his name was Ben Gurion, the first decision that he made was that every child must go to school. This is 70 years ago. And if the child is not going to school, the father is going to jail. Simple. And this is today, 70 years later, look how that we enjoy this decision. And I hope you can see that this is Israel here, number two in the world. Until today, we invest in education. 7% of our economy is going to education. More than here is the UK, 5%, US, all those countries. We still understand that education is the most important. Here, the current recommendation is between five, four and 5% 5 of the economy should 
be allocated to education. But if we look at the world and we look here at Africa, is less than 1%. Less than 1% is going to education. This is the future. And we have to convince you, the engineers, you have to convince you, government, that to, edu to invest more in education. Now look at this. Today, the GNP of Israel, 350 billion US dollars, is more than all our number, our, our neighbors, all the Arab countries around us together with the oil. Why? We, because we invested in education. Can you imagine? By the way, the GNP of Nigeria, I read, is about 550 billion. 550 billion dollars is the GNP of Nigeria. And Israel is 350, can you imagine? Israel is only 9 million people, more than half of Nigeria, and no oil. Now look at this, here, oh, it's not clear. This is Ghana, this is Ghana, and this is South Korea. This is in 1950. 1950, Ghana and Korea were at the same socioeconomic level. Korea, Ghana, as you know, they have oil, they have bauxite, they have cocoa, and the socioeconomic level is the same until today. Korea, with no oil, with nothing, but they invested in education. So look at them, how, how high they went. And we can look here at Kenya, India, China, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. This is in 1960. Look what happened today. 2009, Kenya is the same. India went up, China took off Zambia, Zimbabwe is disappearing, unfortunately. Now, two words about climate change. I think everybody knows this is the Sahara, north of Nigeria. Look at this. We, we participated in the study in East Africa, together with USAID, Galilee Institute, and what we found is, look at this. This is Lake Victoria. In the middle, you know, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. And can you imagine the lake is shrinking? The lake is shrinking. There is less and less water. And in fact, this is the effect on rural food supply. We can see, you cannot see it here, but the red is minus 15% in the production of agriculture only because of climate change. Already agriculture is not enough, and I will talk about it. So due to climate change, and look at this, this is the number, this is the change in length of growing period. You see, here is Nigeria, between one and 20 fewer days per year, only due to climate change. Here, even in the west of Nigeria, it's between 20 and 50 fewer days of growing period. This is Lake Chad. Lake Chad in the year 1972, it was the size of Israel, 20,000 square kilometers. Lake Chad in the middle of the Sahara. And where is Lake Chad today? Dry, totally dry. I don't know if you know, but there is no water in Lake Chad anymore. And look at all those hazards, you know, floods and things like that all over all over, and this is here, between 1900 to 2000, went up almost one degree. Can you imagine? It's so much, one degree. This is in the north of Kenya. It's one of the states in Kenya, it's called Masabek. Can you imagine, 40% of all the livestock already died, 40% died. Lack of water, lack of water, and here, this is the water availability between the year 1990 to 2025 in Africa. Here is Cote d'Ivoire. The first one is Cote d'Ivoire. In 1990, they had, this is the amount of water. And in 2025, six years from now, less than half. Here is Niger, Benin. All these countries, they have less and less water. Here is Nigeria. Nigeria has 
in 1990 up to here, 2025, half, even less than half. You see, Ethiopia, oh, here Djibouti, no water anymore, no water. Kenya, half of the water. Can you imagine? On top of everything, you cut trees, deforestation, all over. You know that forest in the world here, the average is 31 degrees, number one is 69 percent. In Africa, it's 23. Unfortunately, Uganda is already 15. Kenya, six, six percent. They cut all the trees. In Ethiopia, it's even three percent. And I know here in this country, also the countries, you know that in Israel, we cannot cut a tree. It's illegal. It's against the law. Sometimes you want to build a house and there is a tree in the middle, the municipality will convince you to build a house around the tree, not to cut the tree. Oh, seriously, you have to take the tree and plant it somewhere else. The Israel is the only country now, I think, that the number of trees is still increasing because we cannot cut the tree. And of course, the trees themselves, they also impact climate change. And here, this is the impact by UNDP, UN, United Nations Environmental Program. You see, change 2.7% 2, 2 of the GDP decline. Can you imagine? All over. Look at this, by 2050. Here, here is Nigeria. Between 3 and 5% less sea level is going up. All those from Lagos, where will they run? Maybe they'll come to Ibadan when the water rises. Now, please listen carefully. Here, this is the areas at most risk from climate change. You see here? This is the areas at most risk from climate change. What do, can we see here? Here is Boko Haram. Here is Darfur. Here is Somalia. Here is the Shabab. So maybe because of climate change, not only the economy is affected, but also security. And in the Middle East, I'm sure you heard about the civil war in Syria. Seven years of civil war in Syria, and now everybody understands it's because of lack of water. Lack of water. There were three consecutive years of drought, and also the, Tur the Turks put some dams on the rivers, and in Syria there was no water, so they started this civil war. Seven years, the whole country is destroyed. It will take them 50 years now to build back. And not only that, because of water, the Americans, they project that there will be civil wars in Africa. Not terror here, terror there, Mr. President. Not terror here. Civil war in Africa by 2030, because of climate change, because of lack of water. Now, listen, listen, please listen carefully. We in Israel, because there is no water, we reuse 90% of our water. We reuse 90% of our water. Can you imagine? You flush the toilet, and the water goes, reuses, and goes to agriculture. In fact, the water is safe for drinking. But you don't want to drink water that was sewage. Just the feeling. It is safe. So we use it only for agriculture. But all the agriculture in Israel is water by reuse of water. Can you imagine 90% of the water? Number two in the world is only Spain with 19% of the water. But if we can do reuse water in Israel, why can't we do it also in Nigeria? It's not a secret. Especially you, engineers, you understand what I'm talking about. Here, this is the, you see, 90% of all the water in Israel is reused. Most of the agriculture of Israel is watered by reused water. Also, I'm sure some of you heard about the dripping system that was developed in Israel. Also, the dripping system is genius because the plant needs, you can measure the plants, and now everything is computerized. 
Agriculture in Israel is now computerized because you can design the amount of water for every plant. And sometimes, you know, as if we don't drink, it's not good, but if we drink too much, it's also not good. So also the plants, if you water too much, it's also not good. So here with the dripping system, here, can you imagine, not only that we don't have water, but part of the peace agreement with, with Jordan. Here is our late Prime Minister Rabin, the one that was assassinated, and this is late King Hussein, and the, near the Sea of Galilee, and Israel, part of the peace agreement, we give Jordan every year 50 million cubic meters of water, because Jordan is also a desert. Now, can you imagine, here I was invited, this is the governor of Tana River in Kenya, one of the, one of the states in Kenya, and this is the biggest river, Tana River. This is why the, the state, the, it's called Tana River. This is the governor, he's alumni of Galilee, so he invited me with my wife, this is my wife. And we came there, and what did we see? That the water is going into the ocean. Nobody touches the water. Not only that, the water goes into the ocean and people, in fact, here, people shout, we don't have water. They don't take the water. They even shoot at each other. I'm serious. Two times, they, they fight over water and there is water going to the ocean. Can you imagine here, they were wounded and people are, were leaving from one place to another because of water. And this is in the south of Kenya, under the Kilimanjaro, there is, it's called Mzima Springs, excellent water, but the water goes into the ocean. Only 10% of the water is going to Mombasa, the second city in Kenya, and, but 90% of the water is going to the ocean. And here, this is the largest state of Kenya, it's called Turkana, and we designed here a program. This is four times bigger than Israel. Almost 80,000 square kilometers, totally desert, totally desert. But there is water in the aquifer. So the government, the, gov the governor sent 10, he, ex he selected 10 experts, engineers of water. They came to Galilee for one month. We also, they studied water and reuse of water and we also worked with them on a plan how to turn Turkana to a garden. And it is possible. It is possible because if we do it in Israel, and by the way, half of Israel is desert, like Turkana. All the south of Israel is desert and all the agriculture is move, of Israel is moving into the desert. Because once you have water, you don't need the desert. The same thing we try to do with Kano State. Kano is like Turkana. Desert, you know, Kano State. And I, I was invited, I met, this is the governor. I understand now he has some legal problems. But this is in his previous term. We signed an agreement here. Kano State Government, Nigeria, Galilee International Management Institute, that they will send engineers, water engineering, and they will learn from the Israeli experience. However, unfortunately, they didn't send you anyone, although, although we allocated scholarships according to the agreement. And this is the government, you cannot see, the government of Kano. This is the governor, I'm sitting here, but so far, no one came. Also, Gombe State University here. Gombe State, the, the vice chancellor of Gombe State University, Professor Mahadi, he studied at Galilee twice, so he invited me. I gave a lecture there on the Middle East a peace agreement, and he was the governor. The governor, he was getting a nice head. And this is Aero 5. We also signed uh, an agreement with Kaduna. Now, for, before I continue about water, I want to mention one thing about population. Look at this. You know, there are 31 countries in the world where one, women have more than five kids per woman, and 29 in Africa, 29 in Africa. And can you imagine, look at this, not only that, also 
we become older and older. So we have 9% of our population will be older. It was not, no, it was 9% until, but until 2050, we will have close to 20%. Close to 20% will be, you know, retired people, more productive. We have to feed them. We also have, usually they consume more medical services. We have to think about it. Now, look at this. This is, in 1950, there were 200 million people in Africa. That's all. In 2015, already 1.2 billion. In 2050, there will be double, 2.4 billion in Africa, and in, 20, in 2100, 4.2 billion. How are you going to feed them? How are you going to feed them? Look, Africa is going to be 40% of the population in the world, where it used to be only 9%. But look at this, look at this, please. Here is Nigeria. How many? 900 million people will live in Nigeria in the year 2100. 900 million people. Can you imagine? More in the U.S. More. More. Tanzania, 2076. Congo, Ethiopia, even Uganda. And if we look here, here we see that Nigeria, this is Nigeria, here it's written Nigeria. In 2050, Nigeria will be more than 400 million people. How are you going to feed them? We have to make a change. And today, even yesterday, we have to make a change. We have to improve our agriculture, and in a minute I will talk about it. We have to find a way to really use water, and I think that engineers are really the, should be the leading force. Because you understand what, uh, what it is to reuse water. It's not a problem, it's only a matter of water. In Uganda, Uganda was only 6 million people. 6 million people, and here there will be 130 million. Huh? Hun they won't be able to, Kenya, 100 million people. I don't know how many of you drove in Nairobi. It's even worse than Lagos. Look at this, this is Lake Victoria. In 1970, you know, every 10 years, the red is the number of population. More and more people are moving around the lake, Lake Victoria, and the lake here is 2010, 2015, already 30 million people living around the lake, and the lake is shrinking. Now think about it, this lake is also the source of the Nile. So also if there will not be water, also in Egypt they will not have water to drink. Life expectancy is going up, so more and more. Now, the main risk, the main risk is that farmers all over Nigeria, because of lack of water, because they cannot compete, and in a minute I will talk about it, they will move to the cities. And indeed, indeed, the migration is in the cities. Can you imagine? In 1950, only 5% lived in cities. 95% were farmers. And in 2050, close to 50%. And can you imagine? Look at this. Please, look at this. These are the cities. Here is Lagos. Lagos, in the year, in here, in the year 2010, Lagos was 10 million people. I just came yesterday from Lagos. It took three hours because one hour was just to get out of Lagos. Then, but it was 10. Look at this. In the year 2050, Lagos will be 40 million people. 40 million people. How can you manage a city of 40 million people? Also, all the other come here, Kinshasa, Cairo, more than 20. Dar es Salaam. In 2010, Dar es Salaam was only 3 million people. There will be more than 20. Nairobi, it was only 3 million people, it will be 15 million people. Unbelievable. Here is Abidjan, more than 10 million. Even Kano, here it's written Kano, it was 3 million people, more than 10 million in Kano. How can we stop it? By teaching the farmers 
to be more productive, to stay where they are. By the way, the farmers, they don't want to move to the city to be unemployed and to live, uh, uh, you know, the way they live as, uh, as refugees. They prefer to stay where they are. But we have to teach them. And this is what we do. We have so many programs like this. So in order to minimize the migration, we have to develop efficient agriculture. Farmers will stay. They prefer to stay where they are. They don't want to move. Now look at this. The agriculture is 60% of all the employment, but it only provides 33%, meaning it's inefficient. And look at this. This is the annual growth rate of agriculture between 1961 to 2011. Now, it's not Israel or the US. Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Brazil, and Nigeria. This is the, here is 3%, 2%, only 1.2% in Nigeria, the annual growth rate. Inefficient. Now you cannot compete. The farmers cannot compete in the world. And this is not something, it's not a secret, or that we have to wait for him up there to help us. No, it's only a matter of training, a matter of capacity building. Look at this. This is, this is improved seeds. Improved seeds. You know, all the time we improve seeds. So here in Nigeria, it's only 5%. In East Africa, it's 25%. In Asia, 60%. So of course you cannot compete. Their agriculture is more efficient. Here, irrigation. What happened? Sir. Oh, thank you. Here, irrigation. Less than 1% of the Arab land in Nigeria, less than 1% is irrigated. Less than 1%. Here, 28% in Thailand. Look at these fertilizers in Nigeria. Only 13 kilo per hectare. Only 13. In the world, it's 100 kilo. Asia is 150. President, how can you compete in the world? And again, it, this is not a secret. And here, even tractors. Only 10 tractors per 1,000 hectares compared to 241 in Indonesia. So the potential, potential is fantastic. Look at this. You have here, you cannot see here. You cannot see up there. You have a lot of people. You will have 470 million people in 2050. You have here so much water. You have so much water, 279 billion cubic meters. But you saw, you don't use it in irrigation yet. You have the youth labor. You have so much labor. And I know that youth nowadays, they don't want to work in agriculture because they think that agriculture is still, you know, you are plowing. No, agriculture is high tech today. With all those greenhouses, temperature in the greenhouse, the dripping system, everything is high tech. And only and land, you have so much land, only 40% of your land is util, utilized. There is still so much land. On top of everything, on top of this, only 50, less than 50% of the production reaches the market. Whereas in Israel, post harvest, by the way, in Galilee Institute, we have some programs on post harvest. How to reduce post harvest? How? Less than 50%, unbelievable. In some of the Israeli crops, only 2% is lost, 2% compared to 50%. No water that, here it's written, uh -huh, that Nigeria imports more than $11 billion of wheat, wheat, rice, sugar, and fish. You, with the potential, Nigeria has, you can feed all Africa. You can feed for sure West Africa, not import. But with efficient agriculture, with the efficient, what you have here, land and water and, 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 and people. And the, the, the way is just training. 
here in agriculture in Israel, a few words in agriculture. Yesterday we talked about it, about palm trees. Here, I don't know if you can see. Palm trees in Israel, they 400 pounds per year, per tree, compared to 38. Now, yesterday I mentioned already, can you imagine, listen please, the Israeli cow is giving 50 liters of milk per day. 50 liters of milk per day. Now, do you think the Israeli cow will differ from the Nigerian cow? A cow is a cow. What is the difference? A cow is a cow. I want to show you. I hope it will work here. Just one second. One second. I want to show you a, one of our here. One. One of our alumni, when he went back, when he went back to uh, Kenya, we helped him to start a school. Listen, a school of uh, dairy. He came to Israel six years ago to Galilee Institute. He studied in a program of dairy. And when he went back, he, we encouraged him. He started a school for this, his region. And Listen to that. He, in one year, in one year, they doubled the amount of milk. One second. Seven, eight liters, now 12, 13 liters per cow per day in one year. Why can't we do it here? The same thing. And, and we did the same thing with Chuka University. Chuka University in Kenya, they, here, this is the, the, the vice chancellor of Chuka. He is the vice chancellor of Chuka. We met and they sent four faculty members. Now they established a dairy farm. They are teaching all the farmers and they are also selling milk. The university is also making money. And of course, they improved the number of... Uh... Now, can you imagine, this is in the desert in Israel. We grow now watermelon and melon in the air because anyway, there is no soil. Once we have water, that's it. Can you imagine? Here, long shelf life of cherry, cherry tomatoes. Look at this, these are, these are cherry tomatoes in the desert. And we can do it in Kano, in all the desert. Look at this, you know that, that we water those with brackish water, it's not sweet water, it's not fresh water, brackish, and the tomatoes become sweeter. Unbelievable. And this is in the desert, here. 
Can you imagine? These are lemon with no seeds also. These are oranges in the desert. You see, this is the desert. Oranges. Look at this. Flowers. We export flowers. Now, you know, Valentine's Day. The last Valentine's Day, I think it was 2016. Israel exported to Europe. Look at this. 60 million Israeli flowers just for Valentine's Day. Don't you think you can do it here in Nigeria? I think Nigeria is even closer to Europe than from Israel. Okay, I want to tell you the secret. The secret is that Israel is number one in the world in research and development. 4.5% of our economy is going to research and development. And it's not the government. Most of it is the business sector. The business sector, the managers, they understand that when there is a profit, you don't take all the money into your pocket. Part of it, you invest in the product itself. Look at this. Research and development, more than Sweden, Finland, Japan, USA, even UK. Only 1.7% is going to research and development in the UK compared to 4.5%. And you see here, most of it is the private sector, not the government. Not the government. No wonder that we have so many Nobel Prize here in chemistry, 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 economics, chemistry, chemistry, economics. Why? Because of research. When you invest so much in research, you have also Nobel. Did you know that the cell phone itself, everybody has a cell phone now, the cell phone was invented in Israel. Not in the US, in Israel. Microsoft Israel, they have research centers all over Israel, 1,000 employees, most of them engineers, of course. Most of the Windows, what you have in your computers, Windows, NT, XP, all of them developed in Israel, in Microsoft Israel. You know the, the, the stock exchange in New York, what is called NASDAQ, that it's especially for high tech. Now look at this. Israel has 63 companies, high tech companies in NASDAQ. This is in NASDAQ. Canada is 48. Even Japan, only six. UK, five. India, three. China, zero. China, they only copy the Chinese. Seriously. They don't develop. There is no research and development. This is, please remember, Israel is only nine million people. And 63 high-tech companies are in the NASDAQ already. Intel, you know, Intel is such a huge country, a huge company all over the world. 40% of, 40 of all the research of Intel worldwide is done in Israel. And <coughs> Intel now is investing another $1 billion in putting another uh, research center. Also Apple, Apple never had any research center outside the U.S., now they open one, first time outside the U.S. in Haifa, in Israel. Space, space, listen, space. We are, Israel is one of the eight countries that launch satellites. But I want to show you something unbelievable. Look at this. This is the satellite, Israeli satellite. But this, you know what is this? This is a real satellite that was developed by school kids, school students. They build this satellite and they launch it to orbit. School kids, students. And mobile eye. No, uh, yesterday we used Waze. Waze coming here to see, you know, transportation. It was also developed in Israel. Sandbix is this. Here, we start using solar in the sea. You see, we put it in the sea and produce electricity. Where is our friend from the electric company? Here. Yes. Here you don't have sea, but in Lagos you have enough, lagoon and everything. Here I want to tell you about, give an imagine. Listen, please, listen to the following uh, story. Israel had to develop military industry. So we developed military industry. 
And one engineer developed a missile. And at the tip of the missile, there is a small camera. When you shoot the missile, the camera takes pictures, broadcast to the base, so you can divert the missile. Now, please, just imagine. You have to use your imagination. This, this engineer, he had an idea. What is the idea? Try to imagine, to shrink this missile, the same idea, to a small medical pill with a small camera. Now you swallow the, here, you see, missile engineer, it's written here, missile engineer. You swallow this pill, and the pill takes, here, the pill goes into your, our stomach and take pictures. The same idea of the missile. Missile with a small pic, a camera, now with a small medical pill that you take, you swallow with a small camera, and this is the picture from our stomach. So if you want to see what's going on in our stomach, you don't have to open. You take the pill, take pictures, and broadcast the pictures outside. Can you imagine? Unbelievable. Alternative energy. Those of you who visited Israel, they saw every house in Israel, you must, must, you must put, yeah, solar energy on top of the roof. Every house. Since 1950s already. You cannot get a permit for the house. Here, this is in the desert, you see? Solar in the desert. So here, you can uh, boil water in five minutes. You can prepare rice. Here, this is on top of one of the houses. Last thing I want to tell you is Iron Dome. Iron Dome, you know that we work, we fight, unfortunately, with Palestinians, and the Palestinians from Gaza, they shoot missiles. They shoot missiles to Tel Aviv, they shoot missiles to all the urban centers. So, this Iron Dome was developed by engineers, again, engineers, that they developed a very sophisticated system. As soon as the Palestinians shoot the missile, this system calculates whether the missile is going to fall in the middle of a city or outside city with no damage. If it's going to fall outside city with no damage, nothing happens. If it's going to fall in the middle of a city, then this is the, this is the system. And if it's going to fall, if the system calculates that the missile is going to fall in the middle of a city, immediately it shoots a missile against missile and it intercepts. But can you imagine last month the Palestinians shot 300 missiles in 24 hours, 300 missiles. About 80 of them were going to fall in the middle of a city. So they were intercepted by this iron dome <laughs> and nothing happened. Nobody was hurt. So I keep asking, why shooting missiles if you know that there will be intercepts? But now, I don't know if you uh, you cannot see him. He is the commander of the uh, Defense Intelligence Agency of Nigeria. And he was last year, or two years ago, he was in a course in Galilee when Bo President Bukhari appointed him. It was in the middle of the course. We had a big party for him. That, uh, now, I don't know if you know, but the World Bank issued a study that 85% of all the new jobs between 2000 and 2015 were created by small and medium sized enterprises. And indeed, when I was in Lagos uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, I met with the Bank of Industry of Nigeria. And the whole board of the bank came to Galilee and we are working on developing more small and medium sized enterprises. And this is the University of Abe Akuta. I was invited the former Vice Chancellor, Professor Balagun, who was alumni of Galilee, he invited me. And after I gave a lecture, up here, this is Professor Balagun, I'm sitting, I'm standing here talking about small and medium-sized enterprises, but they turned me to a chief. I don't know if you can see. They, <laughs> so. but I want to show you one more one more, one second. One of our alumni from 
Tanzania, in these small and medium-sized enterprises, after he completed the uh, he completed the program, he went back to Tanzania. another one of our alumni that uh, implemented and we helped him to implement so it is possible it's not that I, 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 I specifically wanted to give you examples that it is possible and here also University of uh, uh, Nigeria in Suka the I don't know yeah he was the vice chancellor Okolo or he studied at Galilee also the the, the vice chancellor that just ended his term, Ben Zumba is also an alumni, and the new vice chancellor of the University of Suka is also an alumni of Galilee, and uh, here is a professor at the Wale, you cannot see, Minister at the Wale, the former vice chancellor of uh, uh, University of Ab Ab Ibadan that is also an alumni. Now here, Zimbabwe, this is Midland State University. Zimbabwe is bordering Namibia. Namibia is a desert. And the desert is moving into Zimbabwe. So we designed a program with Midland State University. Here it's written, water management is a nine-month program. Nine months. Out of the nine months, six weeks are in Israel at Galilee Institute. And we are going to start in November. How to stop the desert? The desert is moving into Zimbabwe. And this is Winneba, Ghana. The Minister of Education of Ghana is alumni, is is a physician, Prempe. So Winneba, we designed a program with Winneba and also University of Professional Studies. Here, listen, it's Master in Educational Management. Four semesters. The first semester is in Ghana. Second semester at Galilee. Third semester at European Institute of Educational Leadership. And this is going to be the, 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 the leadership, the group the leaders of Ghana in education. They, we also started a, a medical school, a joint medical school between a Ghana, Ghanaian, Israeli medical school. And here we signed the agreement. I don't know if you can see. Yes, here she is the ambassador of Israel to Ghana. And the same thing with the University of Nigeria, Suka, or in the, uh, Ethiopia also. Here, even when there was this Ebola, in West Africa, so we sent our uh, professor uh, Norman to uh, uh, Ghana and they came from all uh, uh, this. We have an agreement with WHO, World Health Organization, and they sent their people because the problem is that none of the countries can really cope with 
the problem of uh, health efficiently. We don't have enough, no country has enough hospitals. But, but the thing is that we have to, to prevent people from going to the hospitals. And I want to tell you that now in Israel, this is uh, something is very interesting. You know, in every community there is one physician who is the community physician, family physician. Family physician. So, for many, many years in Israel and also all around the world, how do we pay the family physician? We pay the family physicians according to the number of patients, number of visits of sick people that come to visit him. Now, listen to that. The Israeli government or the Israeli health authorities decided to pay the physician not by the number of visits of patients, but the number of healthy people. Let's say that he has a community of 2,000 people. Until now, 200 or 300 used to come because they are sick. No, you as the physician, you are responsible to make sure that your patients are healthy. Encourage them to eat less, encourage them to do sport, encourage them to quit smoking. And you are getting paid by the healthy people and not by the number of sick. Can you imagine? This is a, 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 new, a new philosophy, a new concept. So I, he mentioned already that we are part, part, you cannot see. Galilee Institute is also part of the security uh, network of East Africa, which is Tanzania, Kenya, Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, South Sudan, and Ethiopia. We meet every year. We are trying to find, this is the, this is the chief of staff, the head of the military of Ethiopia. He was replaced just last month. And the new chief of staff, was assassinated. They killed him. We are part of Emuni. I will not go into that. But today, higher education is also becoming more and more international. So, for example, this is 220 universities around the Mediterranean that Galilee is part of it. I am the, the Senate member. And what is the main issue? Water. Because all over the world, the water issue. It's not only here in Nigeria, it's all over the world. But here in Nigeria, you have water. In, in Syria, they don't have water. In Jordan, they don't have water. Also in Israel, we don't have enough water. I will go here. Can you imagine China? Look at this, China. Big China. They came to Galilee Institute and we signed with them five-year agreement on innovation in agriculture. Here, this is the Deputy Minister of Science and Technology of China, came to Galilee, this is our yard, and we signed the agreement that innovation in agriculture, because they don't need their innovation, they don't think uh, innovatively. And also India, I don't know if you can see, this is the Prime Minister of India, Modi, and I'm sitting here, also sign an agreement. They also come to learn from us. Here, one of the universities south, in the south of India, they, were, they decided to establish a new center. This is an engineering university. It's called Velour Institute of Technology. And they decided to establish, this is the vice chancellor. I am here, and uh, here we inaugurated the new center for agriculture. Even Japan, we work with Japan here, University of Osaka, on water management. And Indonesia, of course. Can you imagine, this is the Prime Minister of Portugal because we are working with your neighbors, Guinea-Bissau and Angola. Who is she? The president, of Li former president of Liberia. She came to Galilee and we are now working with Liberia. Liberia, you know, was destroyed by the war, so we are working with them. By the way, look at this. Here, here. This I did with my finger. I don't remember what I did like this, but she replied like this. The same thing. And this is the president of Kenya, Kenyatta. 
I am here, he came to Galilee, and we had a discussion on what? Water management. And we signed an agreement with the Council, Council of Governors. Kenya, like Nigeria, they have states. They call it counties. They have 47. You have 36, they have 47. And he is the chairman of all the governors. So we signed an agreement with the council, and they come to learn. They understand that the most important thing is to learn, to learn from our experience. Here is the vice president of Malawi. OK, last thing is Ethiopia. This was the president of Ethiopia. I will come back to, to Ethiopia. And Uganda, president. This is Uganda, again, the government of Uganda and Galilee International Management Institute. We signed an agreement. This is the Minister of Finance of Uganda, together with me, here, Joseph Shevel, president. And now, not only did they come to learn, but there is a follow-up. The follow-up is the most important thing, because we train trainers. They go afterwards to train the farmers. And every three, four months, we send one of our experts to make sure that they are implementing it and that they are not sleeping. That's, and, ah, and I forgot, we committed of, for increase of production of agriculture 5% every year. The agreement is for five years, so it's 25% in five years. We are working with Harvard University and also Berkeley in agriculture, Berkeley in the US. Maybe this is the biggest, the biggest agreement is with OAS. Organization of American States, 34 countries in the Americas. This is the Secretary General, that's me. We signed an agreement. And just last week, I was in Washington. We renewed for two more years the same agreement. And uh, this is Haiti. Haiti is the, she is the Minister of uh, Health of Haiti and the, the poorest countries in the world. So what can we do? First of all, we saw the 60% of the Africans are working in agriculture, but only 33% of the GDP. Very inefficient. We saw that heavy dependence on food imports, over $35 billion food import instead of export with all the potential. We saw that droughts, water, there is famine in East Africa. We saw 60% of the Arab world in the world is in Africa. And 40, only 40% 40 in Nigeria is utilized. So what can we do? We believe the incorporation in production, in dairy, in aquaculture. Aquaculture, you have here the ocean. And by the way, I met with the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos two days ago. He, he is also alumni of Galilee and they have a fishing faculty, so we'll develop jointly aquaculture, horticulture, post-harvest, of course, and drip irrigation. <laughs> Training of youth in entrepreneurship, and especially you Nigerians, you are the best entrepreneurs in Africa, no question about it. We know it, everybody knows it. So, but there are, there are ways, there are ways we, in Israel, <coughs> in order to encourage, we have incubators, technological incubators, agribusiness incubators, all kind of incubators. So we can do the same thing in here. Also here, incubators and incentives. Of course, reuse of water, especially in the north of Nigeria, probably the most important thing. And solar energy. The sun that you have here is the same sun in Israel. Why do we enjoy it and you are not enjoying it and using it? Can you imagine, even in Germany now, they are using solar energy. And we also, this is in Ethiopia. We are now, we have a program to reduce 20% of their uh, car accidents, 20% in three years through education. I want to say something because, yeah, because we, uh, we are involved very much in peace. Galilee Institute, first of all, we cooperate with everybody. We have Muslims, we have Christians, we have Baha'i, we have Chinese, everyone. So we also involved in peace, and this is a, a, 
I don't know if you are familiar, but now in Israel we, there is the right wing, or what I call Republicans, and the Democrats. We belong to the left. I belong to the left. We believe in cooperation. Usually the Republicans, they like uh, to fight. Look at Trump. So here, this is the Mediterranean Peace Forum. He is the prime minister, he was the prime minister of Palestine, and together with me, we are co-chairmen. And can you imagine, this person is the vice chancellor of the University of Gaza. Gaza, that are shooting missiles to Israel, we cooperate with the university there because we believe in cooperation. And he comes to me whenever he gets permits. And he is a, you cannot see Jordanian in all the... Uh... Okay, just two words about Galilee Institute. We have Center for Agriculture, Environment and Water, Center for Health Management, Capacity Building. Few words, maybe here I should say, listen, we divided the world into two parts, the developed and the developing. Those who come from the developed countries, and now China for us is developed, they have enough money. India is a developed country. Of course, uh, Europe and North America and Japan. They pay for the programs, they pay tuition, they pay living expenses, and they pay airfare. Those who come from the developing countries like Nigeria, we waive tuition. You don't pay tuition. The courses are for free. And you only have to pay for the living expenses and for the airfare. Now, living expenses, and it's all written in the website, living expenses covers everything. From the moment you depart in Tel Aviv airport, a, 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 a driver will wait for you until the moment you depart, you don't need any penny. Everything is, is covered by living expenses, so you have to pay only living expenses. And what I wanted to suggest to the engineering, like we, you saw, we signed agreements with government of China, we signed agreement with Organization of American States, with Kano State, with the government of Uganda, Kenya, Liberia. We are willing to give the organization of engineers of uh, Nigeria, especially engineers on water. Those engineers on water, they can come and learn the reuse of water. We can give you on project management. Those, I don't know if you have agricultural engineers, but maybe soil engineers, agricultural engineers. Really, we will, I will, when I go, I'll check. I can even check now. How many scholarships we can give, for example, in September or October or November? And I will send to you. I will send to you the deal, and then you circulate to all the, what is it, 50,000 you told me yesterday. You send to all the 50,000, and those who want to come, they are welcome. And really, we should push together, because I hope I convince you, the potential is here. The potential is in your hands. And it's not in the hands of the government. It's in your hands, like in Israel. Research is not done by the government. It's by the private sector. So just a few words about Galilee here. This is how it looks at our yard when uh, we have 24,000 alumni, can you imagine? 10% are Nigerians. We have more than 2,300 Nigerians already studied at our institute. And here, even the World Bank, this is the, here it's written, Vice President of the World Bank Africa region. So he writes, dear Dr. Shevel, here, what is it? My colleagues and I are keenly aware of the Galilee Institute's work and recognize that it is a world leader in the developing and implementing effective, sustainable water management practices for agriculture in Africa. You see, we very much appreciate the assistance the Galilee Institute is providing to African countries. Hafez Ghanem, he is the, uh, the vice president of the World Bank. And uh, even South Sudan. This is a new country. So now the World Bank came to us and we helped the government, because there is a new government. Most of the ministers are, are former generals. They don't know how to uh, deal. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to tell you is about this. About uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea. 
You know that Ethiopia and Eritrea have been at war for 20 years. Why? They have a piece of land that they fight over this piece of land. Eritrea says, this is mine, and Ethiopia says, this is mine. And for 20 years, can you imagine, they killed more than 100,000 Ethiopians and Eritreans. Listen, please, Mr. President. Eritrea and Ethiopia. Now, in Eritrea, we have alumni. The Minister of Defense of Eritrea, his name is Efrem Sebhat. He is alumni of Galilee. And in Ethiopia, also, we have so many alumni. He is the, the uh, Speaker of the House. And also, the former president of Ethiopia is alumni. So we, Galilee Institute, we took the initiative, listen, we took the initiative and we presented a peace plan, peace plan to Eritrea and Ethiopia. Our own initiative. And they signed it, they accepted it. I myself went and presented the peace plan to the uh, Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Then the Prime Minister, Haile Mariam, he, it was his, uh, politically, he was very weak, he had to step down. The new Prime Minister, Ahmed, he took my peace plan and they signed agreement. They signed a peace agreement. <laughs> Maybe we can do the same thing with Boko Haram uh, one day, who knows? With this, I want to thank you, and I want to encourage all of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I thank you very much, sir. It is a very thoughtful and rewarding uh, lecture. Which take a lot of time to digest most of the things that you've said. I want to invite the president to. Before I present this award, I need to make this statement that since I have started learning, I have never been having goose pimples and a lot of emotion and trepidation listening to a lecture. And I tell you, sir, I must call you engineer. Dr. Joseph Chavon, I tell you, sir, you are doing a great thing for mankind. Not only for Israel, but for mankind. And I want to assure you that just like I said in my opening remark, we here will be your ambassadors to make this earth and this world a better place. So it is then my singular honor and privilege to present to you this plan from the Nigerian Center of Engineers Uliole branch. In recognition, it's a special recognition award as the guest lecturer for delivering this lecture to us on the third day of July 2019. And it's signed personally by the chairman of the branch, 
engineer Demola Agro, fellow of the Nigerian Center of Engineers. Congratulations. <laughs> to myself coming from Abuja I needed to give you something as the president of Nigerian Center of Engineers I always did this memento with someone that I admire so much and someone I believe has added value to me personally so in appreciation I'm presenting you this to you sir from the president of stuff that we have here, but then is the joy and happiness. Yes, go ahead, sir. <laughs> well, you're still, you're still going to wait for the dinner. Yes, you're still going to wait for the dinner. However, it's indeed a great pleasure and privilege presenting all this to you. That's another one. It's another style. It's another style. We call this Abetiaja. Uh -huh. uh, can you say that Abetiaja? Abetiaja. Oh, well, it... <laughs> Thank you. So it's really an honor and joy for us to present this to you. Yes. Okay. Okay. And all the paraphernalia that comes with it. This is just to ensure that in your home, in your office, or wherever that you want to put them. This is to show our love and our hospitality to you. And lastly, on behalf of Oli Oli branch of the Nigerian Center of Engineers, led by his chairman, and the honoree bread of today's lecture, engineer in Fedayo Akitunde FNSC, and all the engineers that are here, all the students that are here, as a matter of fact, the students, I'm sure they are double refired, you know, to be able to do great things for this country. And in them, I can see the glitter of hope in their eyes that, yes, indeed, if what this our lecturer has given to us, if what Dr. Joseph Chevron has told us is true, then there's hope for them. And with this hope, we're going out there to walk the walk. We are not going to talk the talk. And thank you also for all the offerings. It's like giving us a blank check to write on. We are very, very grateful for that. I am very sure we will write the check. We will write in such a way that you'll be proud of us. Thank you so much. And we wish you journey mercies and safe journey wherever you go after this. Thank you. So thank you again, everybody, and especially our guest here. Uh, thank you for all the engineering, and really I hope it's a beginning of a long-term relationship and cooperation. And we are ready. This is our mission. This is our mission, and I hope that uh, we see you and all of the engineers. Thank you very much. Now, because of our time, the governor, His Excellency, Engineer Shei Mark in the FNC, is expecting us at the government office. We are all going with our guest lecturer and um, the fellows that are here and the past president and the honorees of today. So we need to close in the next five minutes, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just like the president has rightly said, we have opportunity to have networking with the guest lecturer during the dinner. We'll be, everyone is invited for the dinner. My Five, uh, past president, fellows, branch chairman. I'm sorry if some of you do, do, do not receive any invitation 
card for the dinner. It's happening here by 5 p.m. And that will be an opportunity for us to interact uh, effectively with the guest speaker. Thank you for your time. Like the president said, we have to close now. I will just want us to read the second chapter of the national anthem. Can we rise for the second chapter while we proceed? Second verse. O oh God of creation, direct our noble cause. Help us do that right. Help our youth and truth to know. In love and honesty display. This is a nation. Nation where love and justice shall reign. Amen. Thank you and see you at 5 p.m. National Attempt.